So this is our September 16th meeting. Unbelievable how, how long we've been meeting, but this has been a lot of fun. So it's John Paul Andre and Mark Sheridan here and Murray Lincoln, of course, is, uh, is manning our Zoom call for us. And we've got a few things planned for you for tonight. Uh, we'll come back and start off with a little bit of a welcome and reminder about what we're doing here. And then open it up once again for just general questions and comments that you might have on anything that we've covered uh, on any of the calls that uh, that we made. You know, Murray made the point to John and I a little earlier that we we went through um, initially all of the aspects of caricature carving and are now are coming back to a project. And that was really by design. We, we weren't trying to, you know, hit you with a fire hose of information, but we wanted to give everybody the opportunity to uh, get a sneak peek at all of the things that we'd be covering because everybody was really at different points in their carving experience. And some of them can use some of, could have used some of the things that we, we talked about and some of them will use some of the things that we talked about in the future. But if you have any general questions or comments about anything you've tried or anything you've heard us talk about, uh, you, you can raise it at that point. Uh, we're going to give Murray some time to talk about the Ontario Woodcarvers Association. So you know that uh, Murray is the president of the Ontario Woodcarvers Association. He's also the editor for our, our magazine, our quarterly magazine, Ontario Woodcarver, and uh, has been doing a terrific job in, on both counts. And uh, we just wanted to give him a little opportunity to talk about OWCA and in particular about the magazine, because Murray's got some really great ideas on how to uh, promote us as caricature carvers and the True North Caricature Carving Group. And, uh, and so he'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, we had asked if uh, people wanted to send in photographs of some of the projects that they were working on. And, and we did receive several, and I hope I captured all of them. Uh, but we'll go through some of those photos and, and we'll just talk about them. We'll, we'll hear what the, uh, the carver has to say about it. And then we'll, we'll just kind of chip in with a few comments that hopefully will help uh, oh. improve. Chip and, in. Nice, nice. Chip in. Hey, no pun intended, but that was pretty cool. <laughs> I like I'm, that I'm, gl I'm glad we caught that on video, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but what we'll do is, you know, it's, it, it would be a sad thing to call it a critique. We're just going to look at it and talk about it and have some suggestions. Um, you know, this, this whole thing with the True North Caricature Carvers is about learning. And, and we can learn faster if we all count on each other and learn from all of our successes and our, and our own opportunities uh, for improvement. So, so that's what we'll do here is we'll have a little showcase of those projects. And then finally, John's going to talk about a Christmas project. So try to start bringing all of the things that we talked about together to some extent. And uh, John and I thought uh, a good project would be to uh, develop something over the next couple of months that you might use as a Christmas gift or just something for yourself and uh, you'll be able to practice some of these things. Okay, so that's, that's our plan for tonight. Any comments on, on that or any discussion on the agenda for tonight? Okay, um, so, so again, a welcome to everybody. We've been having a lot of fun with this. It seems like we're getting over the summer months, maybe a couple dozen of us uh, in on the Zoom calls. We have well over 50 of us now on the distribution list of people who might be interested uh, in talking with us on this Zoom call about caricature carving. I suspect that as the fall weather gets a little cooler and certainly as winter comes, we might get back to you know 40 or 50 people on the call at once. But it's been a lot of fun for, uh, for all of us, for John and I in particular, putting these things together. Uh, I hope that, um, you know, it continues to be something that everybody's interested in. Uh, our, our hope is that uh, at some point, we're able to get together in small groups and, uh, and work together face to face. Uh, but our Zoom calls are certainly a, a good way to keep, us, uh, to keep us in tune with one another and, uh, and just sharing ideas. Okay, and with that, let's, um, Murray, do you want to remind us anything about uh, Zoom etiquette or anything before we start? Yes, I'd like to suggest to you that uh, as you're into Zoom, uh, when you first begin and <clears throat> your picture's on the screen, uh, at least when you start, start up, you'll see your little tiny icon about you on Zoom when you open your Zoom program up. If you click onto that, not, not right now, but uh, before you come on to the Zoom meetings, you click onto that little icon, it'll have a drop down. And one of the things is check for updates for Zoom. Uh, Zoom is putting out probably one 
or two updates almost per week, at least a couple per month. And what that's, what's necessary is that they find the bugs that their program is having with certain people's computers and it's reported. And then they offer you a brand new program that's updated and is able to give you a better uh, understanding of uh, what, uh, how the program works and how it connects with people. So just got to make sure I get everybody involved here, get people are checking in. And so when you do the Zoom, if you could, when we start to make a presentation tonight, uh, Mark is going to speak. If you could uh, mute your microphone, and you do that by putting your mouse pointer down to the bottom left-hand side of the screen, if you're on a computer and it may be different on a uh, okay. or cell phone, but mute yourself. And so that would be helpful. Then what happens is by muting yourself, if you cough or sneeze or a dog barks or something happens in your background, you knock the speaker out and your picture comes up. And if your wife calls you, if the telephone rings, we want to make sure you have just the speaker is on when the video comes up. And so that's just a little bit about Zooming. And <clears throat> one thing that is we're doing this kind of thing now, and just to report, this is the second part of what we're doing in, in our uh, Ontario Woodcarve Association, is that we record each one of these videos that are made during our Zoom session. And then as we put it together, uh, this goes up on, to, we put it onto uh, YouTube. And the interesting part is watching the number of people that are coming in to watch the videos after. So as Mark said, there's about 50 on the list right now that receive the emails, but the average right now per month has been about 300 or more visits to the video. And that could be because of the video is the, uh, people are coming back the second and third time to check something out. Uh, that does increase the number of views that we have on the videos. But the interesting part is we've got quite a following coming from the United States now. Uh, they're not always coming into our Zoom meetings, the Zoom session, but they're following by the YouTube videos. And the comments that are coming have been very positive. I want both Mark and John to know this, is that this is some of the best teaching that they've had. They just haven't had anybody describe what you fellows are describing and making it so plain for people to understand what it is. So I just want to compliment you two presenters. You're doing a great job, and there's a wider audience out there watching what's going on. Now, in this today, the last couple of days, from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's a sound in the background, guys. Somebody mute the mic. We have a few people that aren't muted yet. Zenon, John O'Brien, Murray Hinter, and Fred. You might want to just mute your, your uh, microphone. And if you don't know how to do that, Murray can uh, describe that again. Okay, there you go. Bottom left-hand side of your uh, you window, go. you'll see the little microphone. Touch it and it shuts it off. Yeah, and as soon as you want to say something or ask a question, just unmute and that just makes it easier. But it's been excellent, the response that we're getting from these video sessions. So I think that uh, I just want to tell you guys how much I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, we as a group, as we sit and watch this each month, uh, have to think about this too, that it takes quite a bit of preparation time for both John and Mark to do this work for us. And so we're evolving. It may turn out some down the road. We're looking at Santa Claus is now our Father Christmas coming up. Mm -hmm. But we may well look at leprechauns in another month or so, or look at something for the spring. So getting ahead of it so we can give your information ahead of time before you're needing to carve something. So I think that's about as much as Zooming, I should tell. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Marie. Well, um, uh, so, so let's just open up to um, general questions or comments. Does, do, does anybody have a, a comment or a question on anything that we've talked about that you want a little more clarification or you want to comment on yourself that you've tried? If you do, just unmute yourself and go ahead. Just, uh, just regarding the uh, use of Zoom, instead of uh, unmuting, if you hold the space bar, it works just like a push to talk button. It's a lot easier than shutting it off and shutting it on or turning it on and off. Okay, very good. 
So when you're on mute, you just hit the space bar and then you've, you've got the uh, floor. Okay. You just have to hold it while you're talking and let go. I have a question. I was looking for that lead you were talking about to uh, put on the, your images in order to transfer your image for uh, your hats and that. Yeah. I don't know where. Yeah. Um, I had a couple people actually send me an email on that and I looked myself and I couldn't find it either. Um, I found two things though. One is a stick of uh, black charcoal, soft black charcoal. And I think that would do the trick as well, because all you're trying to do is leave some blackness on the mating surface that you're, 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 you're mating with two parts. Um, another thing that I found was it was more like a pastel, a waxy pastel that was, um, that was black. And so that would work equally as well. I found both of those things on Amazon, but if you have an art store or an art shop in, uh, in town somewhere where you live, you'll, you'll find those things there too. And, and certainly if you describe to the person that owns the shop what you're trying to do, they'll lead you right to it. Okay, thank you. Okay. I had a question as well. Where uh, would we find those on YouTube? Murray has been posting those for us. If you just search Murray Lincoln, you'll find all those. But you could also put in TNCC or True North Character Carvers. It'll probably come up. But when I go to look for it, I just put Murray's name in, and I'll and I'll see all of the uh, YouTube um, videos that he's posted. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Well, thanks for those comments and questions, uh, Murray. Why don't we hand it over to you? Uh, what I'm asking you to do in a suggestion for you is that if you've got the last magazine, it should arrive this week, likely. Uh, you'll see the front cover has a, a great picture of one of the biographers of uh, Keith Kirkham. He's got a bobcat that's looking at a uh, butterfly. And uh, it's got a feature section in there just on the biographers in our uh, Ontario Woodcarver Association. What I'd love to see come out of our caricature carvers is John is giving these great suggestions and Mark's kind of doing the uh, color commentary and it's also jumping in with things that he wants to suggest. As you send the photos in to Mark or to myself, maybe to both of us, we'll be able to put some of these in the magazine and uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be as uh, shiny and as dazzling as Mark's carvings are, but it likes to show what you're doing. And so if you could do that, it would really help us. And we'd hope that in that uh, December issue, uh, it comes out maybe the in December, we're hoping to get it around that time, that we'll be able to put the uh, Father Christmas or Christmas carvings. You'll notice this in the Horizon magazine that I asked for you to send in winter carving. So that was the idea that it might not just be for Christmas, but it might go into January, February, and we'll see more of those uh, uh, photographs again in the next magazine. If you'd like to receive the magazine and you're in a club, your club does get the magazine, one copy to each club. But in the case of Ottawa, when you have 160 members, I've suggested to somebody that probably gets left in somebody's washroom somewhere along the line as it's passed on. <laughs> so if you could uh, consider getting an individual membership, your club has a membership to the Ontario Woodcarp Association, but you personally could have an individual membership and then you'll get your four magazines a year. Hey, Murray? Yeah. Is, is the uh, club limited to just Canadians? Right now, the Ontario Woodcarver Association is just for Canadians as the membership is there because it involves an insurance program that helps when we're going to do shows. But we're looking definitely how we're going to be able to look further afield and provide the information we've got through Horizon email as well as through the YouTube videos and maybe a PDF to send out to people. Of the magazine. Of the magazine, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to join uh, and, and at least get the magazine. So tell us what to do. John, where are, you, where are you situated? In Florida. In where? Florida. Toronto? Florida. Florida. Florida, okay. Florida. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to watch the screen here too. So we, we would definitely look at this. We're looking at ways to get this out to everybody. 
we find, I find the value of what our carvers here are doing has been really appreciated by the folks in the U.S. Yeah. And then about, uh, I think I couldn't guess what the numbers are, but uh, there's a good number of people that are even on the Zoom tonight that normally spend most of their winter in Florida or down south in Arizona or wherever. So we've got, they're kind of cross-country, cross-border uh, shoppers. I wonder, Murray, you know, since John's been involved with us, I wonder if we just send him a PDF of the magazine so he can he can see it at least, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You had another uh, person interested, and he was from Texas, wasn't he? Yes, Texas. And also, yeah. uh, one of the problems with as they go further west is the time zone problem. Oh, yeah. And so they're having to come on at 430 instead of 630. Yeah their time in order to make it to ours so yeah uh, we, we're trying to make this more available to everybody and john uh, if you could uh, email me if you take a note just right there it's uh, murray.lincoln at gmail.com m-u-r-r-a-y dot lincoln abe lincoln is one of my cousins back a few generations so it's an easy easy word to remember did you say aol uh did you say at AOL or Gmail? Uh, Gmail. Oh, gotcha. Good. I'll take a look at that video to try to catch your note there too. I didn't get to that one yet. Okay. Okay, I think that's it, Mark. Was it? Okay, we, that's great. Uh, we just encourage each one of you to get involved. And what is happening tonight with the number of people that we have on uh, it being at 22, I received emails from fellows tonight that uh, won't be coming because of the fact that their clubs have started up now and they're back in their club meetings on Thursday night. Sure. Okay, Mark, it's yours. Okay, thanks. For, does, that, does anybody have any, uh, any questions for Marie about the OWCA or, um, or our, uh, our magazine? Okay, that's great then. Um, so I've just um, included a, a bunch of photos that were sent to me uh, of uh, projects that a variety of us have been putting together. So we'll just take a look at them. Craig, I think you're on the line tonight, aren't you? Uh, Craig Severn? Yes, yes, I'm on the line. Yeah, so Craig, maybe the, the, this is one, I think, of a couple that you sent me or a few that you sent me. Why don't you just talk about this one and then, you know, we can kind of chip in and, uh, and give you our thoughts on it. Well, it, it started out, I, I sent it to you um, quite a few weeks ago, actually, and you you changed the jawline under, you, you had me do a triangular shape underneath the ear, mm -hmm. and that was made the jaw, because I couldn't figure out, it didn't look right, but I, I just couldn't see yeah. how to repair it, and I appreciate the help on that, and as you can see, I carved it in, it, it looks a lot better. Yeah. I haven't okay. done the eye yet, but... Uh, that's okay. I'm going to, I work on three or four at the same time. That's the yeah, that's right. Well, that's right. And so what Craig's talking about is this jawline right here. So I think, I think Craig initially had this filled in, but when he took that V cut out there, you can see it's, it, it produced the jawline. It gives you a little bit of a back of a neck and uh, a little bit of a hairline in the back too, as well. So that, that really looks good. Um, what, one of the, J John will uh, chip in uh, with this, uh, with his comments as well. Well, one of the things I like about this, Craig, is that you've done a good job of scooping out this eye socket. Again, you know, as John described to us, very often the the eye is just left right at the front end of the face. And so it looks like there's no side to the eye. And you've done a nice job of scooping it out and which forces you now to put that eyeball in a spot where you do see it from the side. So that that's a really good move. John, do you want to chip in? Yeah. Um, you see where you're uh... Put the, the mouse right where his cheek is, Mark, just about a little higher. Right there. See that? Now, look at mine here. See this, that's got to be scooped out. Okay, hold on. we got to look at yours. So people have got to scroll down oh. to see you and uh, got to find you. Oh, they got too much material there. Yeah. See that? Yep. If you just scoop that one section out right here. That would be you know, that would be the the plot the place for the eye, right? Yep. Good. Okay, so that's all that's all I got. Then you, and then it looks really good. But if you yep. just scoop that out, just underneath the eye, 
you'll see a big, big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Looks it's good. Looking good. Too high. So, so right under here, eh? That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, that's right above that. Okay. That's really good, Craig. Great. Thanks. Now let's see if I can. There. Now this is another one of yours. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Uh, here again, I haven't finished the eye. Uh, me and eyes don't get along very well. <laughs> But I have to keep practicing. It's just a, it's just a head of a, I don't know, baseball player or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you, you, you make a good comment again uh, around practicing on eyes because as, as many carvers have told me over the years, the first thing a person looks at in a caricature carving in particular is the head. And the first thing on the head they look at it are the eyes. So you want to get the eyes as, as nicely done as you possibly can. So on this one, again, you, you know, if you got it, you've got a good start by starting to hollow it out. But if you just feel the side of your eye socket, you'll, you'll notice that right at the edge here, it dips in. There's a V right there. And so in this picture, Craig, if you were to take your knife and just cut a V in here, it would yep. bring that socket to the side again. Like in your previous one, it would bring the socket to the side and take the eye away from just being on the front and bring it around to the side. So, yep. so con consider that. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, the, the other thing that, that I noticed in this, and you can only see it from the back here, is that the baseball cap is quite square, you can see, right? Yes. And we all have a tendency to keep things square when we carve. I know I have that tendency as well. Um, but looking at this, I would take my knife and I would keep the front of the baseball cap pretty flat because that's normally where a little emblem is or something. But then I'd really round this out here and I'd really round it out at the back. Oh, yeah. OK, I understand. Yeah. 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 It's square. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so so when you see straight lines on, you know, for everybody's uh, benefit, when, whenever you see a straight line on your caricature carving, really consider that and say, geez, how can I bring a curve to that or a curl to that? Because it makes it a lot more lifelike and it makes it a lot more funny too, as a caricature. Hey, Mark. Yes. Hey, I, uh, I'm taking a class with Dave Stetson right now. Oh, terrific. And uh, I got yelled at uh, <laughs> because uh, I, my eye sockets were too deep. He says, remember the eye is a mound. And uh, so, you know, he, his bedside manner isn't uh, as nice as yours. <laughs> so uh, I got yelled at. Hell, oh, you got yelled at. John, you might want to com comment on that. Yeah, not, see, not, not, not Dave's bedside manner. The no, eye. no. <laughs> see, I got one almost like yours there. It's uh, with a baseball cap. But see how round it is? Oh, yeah. And uh, so that's basically... It looks very similar, right? It's Craig's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But how about the eye, John? Like, uh, how oh, about yeah. this notion that you can get too, too large a socket? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's for sure. Like, if you, um, placement of the eye, it's, it's a tricky thing, but it, like, it takes a while to learn how deep to go. You know, it's, like you said, it's practice and doing these things here, doing these practice eyeballs just keep on doing that and you'll get it eventually but mm -hmm. just takes time mm -hmm. yeah so certainly you have to get the indentation from the top yeah. of the from the top of your brow because that's your skull there right so you have to yeah. get the indentation from the top of your brow coming down to the bottom and you have to have an indentation this way as well but once you get that you can make a carving line around that almost like a sunglass like yeah. the sunglasses, like a aviator's glasses, and then make the mound from there. Okay, so that that might make Dave happier if you were able to take that outline with your knife, and with that outline that's now deeper, make the mound even within the socket that you've cut. And you got to remember, it's an eyeball, so it's half yeah. a ball yeah. is sticking out. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a ball, so yeah. half round. Yeah, that was a good question. Uh, so this is another one of Craig's. Craig, this is my favorite one of yours. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I, I really like this one. And, uh, and, and I guess for a few reasons, I like it. Um, the, the face, I think, is done really well on this one. You, you've got the cheeks, you know, John's point uh, around getting that cheekbone 
uh, highlighted on your first one. You, you've yep. done that in this one. You've got the eye sockets swept back. So if I were to turn that sideways, I'd see that view on an angle. Um, I, I think this is a really nice carving. Oh, thank you. His That's name so is Billy. And you got the hat. The hat is nice and round. Very, very good. Yeah. Yeah. And he's an Ozark, Ozark mountain boy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it looks great. Yeah, that's a good one. It's Again, good. you know, on, on the on the back, the picture on the back here, you know, take a look at those legs again and just say, how could I make those a little less square? So if you were if you were to make a, a much deeper cut right in the middle here, yep. that would that would force you to round each leg out a little bit. Yep, yep, yep. I see it. Yeah, re re really nice carving though. Thank you. I got lucky. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> John, you want to comment on this one? Uh, here are some legs here. Uh, I I always put a line. Let me put a line down the middle. And then uh, I'll have a line over here. Like, not, I don't have to put a pencil line, but I'm just saying a visual line, right? So you want to take that to there. Ooh, where am I? I? I can't do it backwards here. Yeah. This to there. Right. So you, that, that forces you to round it. So if I can't reach it with my knife, that means it's not round enough. So right. see, if it, it was square, I wouldn't be able to get it over here. So you got to keep on going until you can touch that line. So just keep on carving until you can, then it's, it's round then. So there's the back of a guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question <clears throat> on this carving that we're looking at, the far left one. Um, I, I carve up to the back of the knee and then I carve down from the from the bum, I'm going to call it. But I always yeah. end up, I can't get a nice smooth curve there. And I don't know what I'm doing. I end up with with a, a burr sort of thing there. Yeah. And I end up filing it off or something crazy. I just can't seem to work the knife to get that nice and smooth. Yeah, that, that's probably a couple of reasons. One, um, and the main reason is that you're getting a change of direction in the grain there. So from the rear end to the knee, you're cutting in the right direction of the grain. From the heel to the knee, you're cutting in the right direction of the grain. If you take your knife and just go from the back, his back end to his heel in one continuous movement, when you get to the back of his knee, you're fighting against the grain and there's no way to avoid splitting the wood. And that's why you're getting that burr there. And John's showing you with his hand. Yeah. Um, and so there, there's yeah. a couple ways to a couple ways to get around that. If you absolutely have to work against the grain in a cur curve like that, make sure your knife is just surgically sharp and it'll take care of the grain. If it's if you if if you don't want to do that, if you if you can't do that even with a surgically sharp knife, then decide to make a wrinkle there. You know that, that that's where a wrinkle will be, and so make a line there, kind of a stop cut right at the back of his knee cut from his behind down to that and then cut from the heel up to it and you won't have a burr yeah that's what i ended up doing yeah good yeah nice sharp tool nice sharp tool will do it for sure but but really really think of the point john just made the nice sharp tool because these things have got to be super razor sharp it's got to you, you have you should have taken your knife at that point and uh and, and gone to like a, a leather strop with a, a honing compound on it and, and really made yep. sure that that was super, super sharp. And then you can sometimes get away with that change in the direction of the grain. I have another question. Yeah. Yep. These, uh, these boys are wearing um, uh, coveralls and they have buttons on them. I have no clue how to carve a round button. Well, <laughs> it's not very deep. Yeah. Well, a purist will, would be able to tell you how to carve a, a round button. I'm not a purist. And so, <laughs> and so here's how I've done it. I have gone to um, my favorite hardware store and bought little tiny brass nails. And I've drilled a hole and I've epoxied that brass nail in place. And when it's painted, it's a button. Um, uh. I've also used, um, you know, like a center punch where you'd... Uh, uh, for a nail, countersinking a nail. 
often the center often the center punch is concave spherical concave on the inside if you yep. take that and just press it into the wood you have a nice round button and then just take your knife and cut up to that and now the button is exposed so you can do uh -huh. either way for little sure. um for for coveralls overalls like this fellow's wearing um often uh like you remember on your jeans there's a little rivet by the by the pocket I, I, ju I just use the head of a pin. So cut off about, uh, cut off a pin. So they're only about an eighth of an inch is there, drive it into the wood with a little bit of epoxy and you have a nice silver rivet. So. <laughs> okay. I'll show you how I do it. Yeah. Because you're a purist. You're going to make me yeah. look bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I draw the circle. Yeah. And then I'll go around with a knife all the way around. Then it, each side, I'll like the four corners. I'll go like this, boom, and boom. And go on this side, boom. Can you see that? I can, I can, yeah. I can see it. I can see it. Like that. Pop that out. It's hard for me to do this backwards, but no. And then this side. And go over here. And then you round off that button. Ah, you're sticking up now. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just like the eye, right? Yeah. Right. I use the leather punch. Yeah, you can do that yeah. too. But if you wanted to carve it, if you didn't want to do anything... Then just go back like that and where am I here? Yep. And just smooth that out. The judges are always marking down mark stuff because there's things on it that aren't made of wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just gonna have to live with me, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, that's how I do it anyhow. Yeah, that's good, John. Thanks. They don't mark Great. them down very far. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's all about having fun, doing what doing what is fun. Whatever it takes, get that. Exactly. Whatever yeah, you want I, to I, show. I just remember the judges uh, talking about the string that's wrapped around the carver. Or that's the, the, the moving mover, man. Yeah. 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 There's a string in there. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, now Fertis sent us uh, these pictures of a carving that's just tremendous. Now, John's going to be talking to us about a Christmas project, and I almost think he stole your design, Fertis. Oh, yeah. I think John stole your design. <laughs> Very similar. Yeah, you might want to comment on this one, John. Yeah. Well, it's uh, <laughs> very close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's uh, excellent. Excellent. Uh, I'd like to see a, a more of a, a side profile like this, but it looks really good. Yeah. I'm uh, yeah very impressed. Yeah, yeah, the, you did a really nice job on the eyes. Nice and round. Yeah, nice and round. Mm -hmm. the, the bags under the eyes, the eyebrows, uh, the nose is really well done, like really well, well shaped, you know. And uh, the the way you got the cheeks leading up into the back of the nostrils of the nose. <laughs> Uh, seeing a little bit of a lip underneath the mustache. Uh, nice wrinkles. Nice wrinkles, yeah, yeah. And your painting is really, really accurate. Real. I, I like you. the little white dot you put in the eye to to make the eyes uh, glisten yeah. a little bit. Uh, yeah, I, I got I got this book from uh, the Dave Stetson's book. Uh, the, uh, this one. Oh yeah. And it's a pretty good book, and it uh, it goes through the process of how to build the eye mound and stuff so good i used that and it, it helped me a lot yeah well you did a really mm -hmm. nice job on that yeah thank you there's not there's not too much of a suggestion that i'd offer on that john that that looks pretty darn good really good yeah 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 thank you uh bob you sent us in a few and this is one of them if you want to talk about it yes that that was a that was the first one i did what using your method with the hat and it really yeah. worked good good yeah 
it's kind of fun doing the hat that way, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, quite interesting, and you move things around too. And... Yeah, yeah. Now I'll I'll make the same comment on your hat as I did on my own. That uh, and you might recall me making that comment that uh, although I made my hat fairly flat along the bottom after I did it, I wish that that I had put more of a curve on it. So if you can imagine the bottom of the hat being cut out like this, it would have made the front and the back of the hat droop more and it, and it would have looked a lot funnier on mine. So, you know, when, next time you try a hat, just make the, uh, the initial contour a little bit different, you know, and, and just put a little bit more of a concave uh, shape here and, and it'll just make the hat look like it droops, which is a lot of fun, right? Yes, okay. um, yeah. But, but I, th I think this is a really good carving. I, I like his face, it's kind of unique. I think that, um, you know, looking at this again, you, you, on your next carving, think about how do I gouge that out more so that the eye socket comes way back here because you can really only see a little bit of the eye here where you really should be able to see quite a bit of the eye looking sideways, right? So, so think about that. And the, the other thing that I noticed is the comment John made a little earlier about the cheeks. If it, on your next carving, you know, when you get to this point, if you just hollow out this area, just kind of from where the top of the nostril flares on each side, if you just hollow that out a little bit at the, bo the bottom, it'll really make the face come out. You'll see cheekbones and it'll really look lifelike. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, like, I suggest too is uh, if you go to a, uh, yard sale. If you find a yard sale or something, you find an old cowboy hat. Cowboy hat. Right. Grab it and uh, use it as a model. You'll 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 benefit. I have an old cowboy. I have berets. I have uh, toques and baseball caps. And I have a where is she? I have a dummy. Anyhow, I'm like a model's head. <laughs> she's in here someplace. I don't know where she is, but anyway, she's gone on me. And uh, and I put the hat on. I'll put the hat on the on the model's head, and I'll I'll position it a certain way and everything. And it gives me an idea what what it's going to look like. And and I can uh, make the hat flat. I can curl it up. I can put it on the back of the head. I can. And it just gives you an idea. Mm -hmm. it takes the guesswork out of a lot of the stuff. That's a good thought. Bobby, Bobby also made uh, what, what, while uh, John's looking for his mannequin. <laughs> you, Bob, you might want to comment on this one. No, well, this was uh, just a monk I seen uh, on a little statue, so I tried to copy it. The, the... That's good. He's drumming. <laughs> I uh, got his eyes sunken back a little bit too far and uh, so I uh, popped some, uh, a bead, four millimeter bead in there with the epoxy. Oh, very good. Oh, that's good. It's a little hard to see from the photo, but again, you might want to look at the side view here and say, you know, the next one you do, just put that little V cut back here. Start with a V cut, you know, kind of a channel cut back here, and it'll just drag the eye back, you know, where the eye socket is. And it'll, it'll make it look less that the eyes are right at the front and, and more kind of situated on an angle looking forward, right? Okay, yeah. I, can still, I can still do that. I'm still working on it. Oh, perfect. Okay, that's great. Okay, okay that's don't, great. don't be scared. Here she comes. Ah! ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the model. It was a, a lady gave it to me. It was a, from a hairdresser. She's learning how to be a hairdresser. Yeah. This is the one they use to cut the hair. Okay. And there was a hat. So I put that on and I know I can't I can't put it in, but anyway, not enough room underneath where my camera is. Yeah. If the OPP shows up at your house tonight, it's us that called them, okay? <laughs> Dead woman. Now Dave, I don't know if Dave Hesse's on the line today. <laughs> Dave may have just sent these to you, Marie, to include in the uh, magazine. Yes. Okay. Well, th these are just beautiful carvings, aren't they? I mean, uh, you know, I, I like the fellow on the left here. Uh, just a terrific job. You can see again how Dave made sure everything was rounded. Like there's not really a flat line. 
even if you look at this, his chair, the chair is, is not straight. I mean, it's, it's kind of wobbly in and out. And that's really what gives caricatures their, uh, their, their appeal, I think. But you see everything has got, is rounded. Nothing's, nothing is straight. Um, this, this uh, I don't know if that is Aladdin in his harem or what, but just terrific work again. Everything, look at the, the rug, the magic carpet here, how it's undulating in and out. Just, just, it, just a beautiful job. And, and this is a really an interesting carving too. So Dave is clearly a, a very accomplished carver and uh, is doing a great job. John, you have any comments on that? No, I, I've been to his house. I know. I've seen his stuff. Oh, is that right? Uh, just just beautiful. beautiful work. Yeah, yeah, beautiful work. Okay, so I've, I've been carving a little bit and um, I've been practicing on females' heads. I, I've only done one carving with a female in it and I wanted to do more carvings with, uh, with a female head. So I practiced on this and it, it's kind of fun because I find it difficult because uh, with a man, it's easy to make a, well, it's easier to make a, a, an older man with bags under his eyes and bald head and big ears and big nose. A female, you start putting big ears and big nose and all of a sudden she stops looking like a female. So you have to be a little bit more delicate with kind of a, you know, a scooped nose, a little turned up nose, a really broad smile, uh, really big eyes. Um, that notion of um, carving out the socket and then the eye, you can see how much I carved in here to make the socket the left room for a big eye. And then, and then the socket at the top was quite, um, quite rounded here to show the top of her eyelid, right? So, and then, then very high eyebrows. So yeah, a, different, a different way of, um, of doing a character when you're trying to do a female. And here's the other female that I did. And same sort of thing, the scooped nose, very high cheekbones, a little dimple in the, in the, uh, below the cheek, a uh, very triangular face. And so, uh, so that was kind of fun for me. Any critiques, John? No, it's good. You're coming along there. Good. good. Murray, uh, Mark, tell us. Oh, yes. Just before we leave that one, um, I noticed in some of the uh, females, the out outer edge of the eye is higher than the portion into the nose. They're kind of tilted that way a bit. Did you mm -hmm. do that with this one? Yeah, you, you can see that the angle, it, it might not come up very well, but you can see the angle of the eye is pretty accentuated this way. And, and the other thing to accentuate that, and I've been telling people to, I've been suggesting to people tonight to, to put that little V cut at the end of when you gouge out the eye socket, put a little V cut there and you can feel that on your own head. There's a little bit of a, a you know, there's an indentation just in front of your temple. Well, I really accentuated that so that this upper lid would really accentuate out. And then, then I will follow it up with an eyebrow when I, uh, when I go to, to paint. But yeah, the, the eyes are very much um, angular, kind of almost cat-like, right? Meow. Yeah, try it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay, Murray, tell us about this one. Uh, I start from a cartoon that I draw. And then I choose a piece of wood. And the wood changes the whole idea. <laughs> you can see the little character here. He's got a tremendously big pack on his back. The sleeping bag is intent at the top. And uh, where this came from, uh, the character is on the front of it. A local wood carver passed away. And he was a bird carver. And his daughter contacted me and gave me all of his wood, his wood cutouts. And I have got boxes full of bird bodies. <laughs> and there's not much you can do with it, except there I found a way to use it. I think the tail would be at the top of this uh, bird body. The head was down at the bottom of his feet and it kind of dictated what come out of it. So the characters there. So uh, this character is called Bruce and I nicknamed the, the moose. It's my son-in-law. He's a canoeist. He loves to do canoe trips with many, many portages. The little sign, you can't read it right there, but it says portage number 17, 14 kilometers to the next lake. <laughs> So the, the canoe was my best feature out of it. It really came out well. I love doing the canoe. This is a new thing for me. 
But the one thing about it is, I don't know if you get the pictures of that Boris and Olga a little closer, you'll see. Yeah, uh, when you nice. talked about the eyes, uh, this particular piece of, uh, actually the three pieces I use for the three caricatures, it's not very good basswood. When you try to make that V cut at the side, all of a sudden the whole thing pops out. Mm -hmm. It's not good wood. I love pine. I don't like basswood. <laughs> so it's uh, one of the areas, that, and especially because they're small, the little guy is only six inches tall. And his head is uh, it's a, a separate piece with, so you can turn his head left and right. And I wanted a grimacing look on his face because he's carrying a tremendous load a long ways. I think you did a terrific job on this, Marie. That's that's kind of a happy grimace he's got. Um, you know, you, you you might say that the that the eyes could again be a little bit towards the side, but I think what you've done here kind of suits it because you, the eyes are so close together that it kind of suits it kind of suits the nature of the face to have it just the way you've got it there. Um, but everything looks terrific on it. I like the way that you um, you carved in the rope. You know, Mike, Mike was saying earlier that one of my carvings there that people thought I should have carved that rope around the parcels. You did here. I, I think this is a real terrific little carving. I wanted to ask you about the base. That's carved as well out of basswood? Yes, it's a piece of, uh, actually a piece of pine. Oh, yeah. And I, uh, what the, the caricature stands when I carved him, he's standing on his block of wood. It's the base is a square piece. Mm -hmm. I rounded it off to make it look like a stone and then carved the base, cut a hole in it. Perfect, yeah. And the main reason for this is when I transport it to shows, I can't have a great big container, a little car. Mm -hmm. So this guy actually pulls apart and lays down quite flat with a canoe mm -hmm. and will be put away. But the fun part of this, I don't know if you've ever painted wood to make it look like rocks. That was fun. Mm -hmm. You did a nice job. It looks really good. The coloring is a big issue. Now, behind the canoe in the center, and you can see it behind on the right-hand side, there's a little red sign there. Uh, to cheat a little bit, I like your buttons. These are rocks. Mm -hmm. And so I made an uh, indentation on the base after carving the, the flat rocks and uh, did the uh, uh, crate uh, like a uh, Gorilla Glue stuck mm -hmm. on the side so this base has got it makes it feel like it's all rocks mm. and my I wife had the it. idea she said we need to put little rocks in there so those are real little stones in among yeah. the carved stones yeah that looks terrific i think you did a great job and it's story. the idea i should mention mark came from your moving guy oh yeah yeah good i put everything on that last one you can't really see it too good in the picture but uh, it shows up behind his head on the left hand side you see his bed is on the top of there too yeah yeah no that's good he went camping but he wants and when i get the caricature faces uh, drawing cartoons from it is watching the television with the world's strongest men lifting those ridiculous the <laughs> great big boulders yeah, big rocks yeah and i was going to put blood veins on the side of his face and make his face bright red <laughs> yeah because that's no, some that's of the characters really i see those guys are wild that's really good nice story you tell a nice story with it good story yeah <laughs> Boris and Olga. Boris is the uh, prize fighter. He's won himself a gold shoes. And you can, you can see a little bit of on your screen. He's got hair on his back and hair on his chest and hair on his navel. And got super teeth, a lot of tooth problems. And uh, carving this one here, uh, instead of having the eyes wide open, they're kind of like slits. And then I put a small yeah. hole in it. Yeah. He has a piercing look when he looks at you. Yeah. And Olga is not a really pretty lady. She has got certain character features uh, that are just different. <laughs> yeah. And she's got tooth problems also. I've got a daughter that uh, works in a dentist's office. So kind of inspirations from that. Yeah, that's right. A match well, made in heaven. Yeah, that match made in heaven. Exactly. Good job. Well, one of the things that one of the fellows in this recent magazine coming out this week is Peter Eckberg. He is in northern part of Sweden, and he carves caricatures like this. It's really inspired me some of his work. Good, yeah. He gave me a, kind of a spawn an idea. And what he did, he introduced me to an app that you can get on your cell phone that you bring up the character's face, and you position two dots, one in each eye and one in the mouth. And then you, uh, at, after you get a position, 
then you record your own voice or a music piece or whatever, and your car- your caricatures actually will start moving like a real person. Oh wow! Oh, so I think it's it's, it's, it's a it's a great app to play with a little bit. But uh, this Peter okay. is a musician, so he put in uh, one of his carvings was singing uh, an amazing song. It just it comes out. It just makes us think I'm alive. It's positive. It's weird. Send that, send that app to us. That'd be good. Uh, so the only comment I'll make on this is um, like like just look at the little uh, handkerchief the kerchief she has around her her uh, her head, and you know by putting those little floral patterns around it, really made the carving as well. So you know sometimes sometimes the smallest things like just putting those floral patterns. Uh, re- really make the carving a lot more interesting, a lot more eye-catching. I-, I think Murray did a really great job on this. Now, Mark, I just asked the question. You could see it really. I don't see it real close on her eyes and his eyes. His eyes, of course, is a dot. But I tried to do the V. Yeah. And as I was doing that, other my knife was not sharp enough, or it's rotten wood. Yeah. I lost yeah. the ball. It popped yeah. right out. <laughs> oh, is that right? Eh? Yeah. So no, she ended up with a flat eye. With it, it was a daub of blue in the middle. Yeah. Two pieces of white on each side, and then a, a white spot in the middle. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it came across really well. I, I, I don't think I would have changed anything on this. I, I do notice as I look at her face, and, and it's hard. It's not a really big picture, but um, you know, the wood might not have been the greatest for you. Your, your knife perhaps could have been a little bit sharper as well. Uh, I see a little bit of burr. Sometimes that just comes about by by the painting as well, if if it's not sealed first. But um, but that's the that's the only comment I'd make about that. And I and I'd make that for for myself and for everyone is the your 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 best friend is an ultra sharp knife. I mean, you should be able to put your knife on a piece of wood and without any pressure at all, that knife start to dig into the wood. Uh, that's how sharp it needs to be. When, when I'm carving a, a caricature or a face, I, I sharpen before, middle, you know, I, I'll, I'll do it, you know, hone it a couple of times before, and then in the middle of it, I'll do it again. Just keep it yeah, ra- razor sharp. Yeah, that's right. Listen, all of those were just terrific. That was fun going through those. I appreciate you guys sending those in. Um, John, that leaves us about uh, a half an hour to talk about the project. And, uh, and I'm just- Oh, gonna- pressure's on. The pressure's on. You got to be able to do. You got to be able to do this within a half an hour, uh, and 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 that'll be easy for you. I mean, it's it's an introduction oh, yeah. and get everybody working at it. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and uh, share screen again here, and I'll find your presentation. Just give me one minute, and then um, we'll all have to make sure that at the same time we can see John's uh, face as he's speaking, okay? All righty, this should do it. Okay, Thank you for John. doing this, by the way. Mark, hey, this my, my pleasure. I'm gonna take a couple notes uh, as John speaks on each of these slides and include a little text box, uh, Murray, so that when he does put this in the magazine, you'll have a little text box explanation as well. And just before you start, John, I need these uh, photos sent to me so I can yep. make them magazine proof. No problem. I'll do that tonight. before. Yeah, don't do it tonight because I got to put those text boxes in. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, then you send it to him. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do that. I'll send it to him. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you ready? Cheers. Okay, so uh, this picture is the... Um, the drawing, the concept drawing of what I wanted to do. Something simple, uh, something that uh, ed- anybody can use, use a two by two, or it's not gonna be cut out. You don't have to cut nothing out. You just use a two by two piece of wood. And uh, uh, what with the circles, remember how, how I started the circles, making the nose, the eyes, I did the same thing. Uh, what we started out in the beginning of this uh, lessons, uh, was the circle around the nose, doing the eyes and doing all the, so whole same thing. Uh, so it's a continuous uh, project here. So what we started with, this is what we are gonna end with now. So number two, number two slide. Yeah, when you're doing a, a corner carving, 
you got to look for the direction of the green. So <clears throat> the green uh, to the left is uh, the wrong way. So I, I found the green going this way will be the, the strongest point for the nose. So you got to look for that and then pick either side. That's where the nose is going to be on that side or that side. The other side is too brittle. It'll break off. So you got to make sure you get the green uh, right, the right way. Well, as you and say that, John, you, you said you put the nose down here. Yeah. Okay. Because up here. Or the other end. Okay. This end or this end. Okay. Yeah. Right. But not that, okay. not, not the other way. Right. Gotcha. Okay. I'm trying here. Hold on. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Okay. I, I measured it out. I got, uh, I made the hat two inches, the brim, and then the face. I just did uh, very simple uh, measurements just to try to uh, space out the carving so I don't end up with a small body or too big of a hat or something. I just give it an idea. John, I think okay. you, you told me or you said already that the full length was eight inches. Eight inches, yeah. Two by two by eight. Two by two by eight. Okay. And then I just drew a little picture on there to show how the hat's going to be. Half inch with a brim. And then I start carving. I always start at the top. I always carve his hat first, carve the shape of the hat. And then it's all rounded at the top. It get like I, I don't I don't really I don't worry about uh, being smooth because it's a hat. It's going to be all floppy, and so I make all kinds of marks on there. It doesn't really bother me that it's not smooth. Uh, so it's a lot of movement in the hat. Next. Okay, I'm just writing here. Okay, sorry, Mark. No, no, that's fine. <clears throat> okay, there's the hat. So I made the brim and uh, I will cut out the sh where the, where, where, where whatever side I want the, the palm, this ball thing on the, on the, on the hat, I'll add, I'll draw that in and then I'll shape that and I'll shape the brim. But notice everything is, not, nothing is flat or nothing is straight. So I got to, if everybody can see my screen, even the even the brim is shaped. It's not it's not straight. Mm -hmm. It's always got a nice a nice little shape. This has got a shape. Nothing nothing on this thing is is uh, flat mm -hmm. or or uh, straight. Mm -hmm. So everything, the nose, everything. Mm -hmm. So so this so part this, here, John's yeah. talking about this part here. Like you can see, it's concave. And it's probably like that all the way around, right? Yeah, all the way around. Yeah, and on the top of the hat. Everything yeah, is nothing straight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And when I do cut the, uh, sorry, when I come back, Mark, a second. when I go back, when I cut the, uh, where the hat over, over hangs on the side, I don't go straight in. I do it like a, as a, uh, it's like a 20 degree angle. So that um, if you go in straight, you're going to end up with a little bird. So I always put it on a bit of an angle and cut it on, uh, as a V. And uh, the, it, I find that I get less burrs underneath there. So, so okay, we got the hat done. And then I put in the notch for the nose. And can you go back to my screen? Like, uh, yeah, actually, back. we're... Yeah, everybody should be seeing your screen at the same time, John. Okay. Okay, so I always put in a notch here. A notch here, up and down, underneath the nose. And then I go to this one. Where? So I did this and this, and then I come back over here. Oops. And I go that and that and over here that and that so now i got a spot for my eyes and then where's the other one oh, yep so then i'll come down we're not this is one, wrong one sorry second 
Okay, here it is. And then I'll split. See where I was a triangle here. And I'm going to split that one and go up. Now I've got the two eyes. Areas for the eyes. And then underneath the nose. So I got that part already. And then I can, now I can put in the cheeks. Or you can go down like that. And on both sides. Now the nose is out. Yep. And then you can angle that angle back the nostrils. And then I can then I go over to here. And then I can put where, where that line is, where I started here, that line is the center of the eye. So now I'm back to this one. So I make a half, half moon here and a half moon here and cut that out, cut that out, make it a half round. This is all round, half round, half round here. And then I'm going to take you back to your pictures here. So, because you're yep. describing what yep. you're showing on your photos here too. So yep. before you cut those eyes out, you, you, you can see on this photo, that center line that you called the center of the eye, right? Yeah. That's where the eye will be yeah. opening. Yeah. So, so you, you had cut those out. You had, you had cut out each side of the nose. Um, you'd done a little bit more work on this photo in terms of uh, uh, defining the nostrils, right? Right. Yeah. And then I'll cut these. I'll cut those up. I don't know if the next picture doesn't have it. The next picture? It might. Yeah. See where I got the eyes cut out. Yeah. So it's a half moon on, on the top and half moon on the bottom. Yeah. And then I, I'll round them off, round them off until I get enough, until it's round enough so I can put the eyeball in right. or the, you know, the, open the eye. Yeah. So, so look right now, you could have a closed eye. It could be closed. Be yeah. sleeping or yeah so you, so you went from the, you know that to that with yeah. the eye you can see how the eye has been cut out now a couple of things john I'll, I'll just point out to people again there's that v we've been talking about right yeah you know so john put that in and it forced when he did that it forced this part of the eye socket this is the skull right it yep. forced it back. So if he, if he were able to turn that sideways and look at it from this thing, you'd see that full eye. John, the, the, the other thing I notice about this and the thing I, I screw up the few times that I've done a Santa is I have to keep remembering not to cut below the nostril or below the nose too deeply because a huge mustache is going to be there. Right, right, right. You're still going to make a mound like you see on my picture now. Yeah. The color Santa, it's rounded, right? Right. <clears throat> okay well, we got have that mound yeah so the next yep see now i cut the i opened his eyes that top piece that top half moon is opened up okay i'll just go back yeah. to the previous so from there to there right now the eyes are open see it's closed and now she's open yeah and now i can same thing I go in there and shape that as a round ball underneath inside there. And each corner uh, on this end, I can see here, each corner of the eye is, you got, you got to take the little triangle out on both sides. Right in here you're talking about. Yeah, right in there. Yep. See a little darkness one there, there? And one there. Yeah, it's a little shadow. Yeah. So that rounds that eyeball right out. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so just, just, just to emphasize what John said, he's got a nice round mound here. That's the upper and lower eyelid, but within that round mound, he's got another ball, another sphere of the eyeball. And so he's made sure that that's even a tighter curve than the, the eyelid, right? Cause the, yeah. the ball fits within this larger <laughs> ball, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. Yep. And now I'm shaping the beard and the must from exactly what the picture was. It was just the same photo as uh, I went back and start cutting out the beard and mustache and shaping it a little bit, rounding it off. Mm -hmm. And there again, it's nothing, nothing square. Nothing is all, nothing straight. Mm -hmm. try, try to get every, try, make a, a conscious effort to make everything, you know, round. Mm -hmm. and and indented and not nothing nothing straight it'd be so yeah. boring if it was just a straight carving right. so you want everything nice and rounded and moving and flowing <clears throat> that's the word i'm trying to say flowing yeah and then the, and just to pick up on something that john was saying earlier when we were looking at individual carvings you know the, this is an important line for santa in particular because he has chubby jolly cheeks right so he brought the cheekbone right up to where the beard is and then underneath the cheekbone, there's a little bit more kind of a, a fatty cheek. And then he put a little line in there, like a dimple underneath it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm shaping the arms. <clears throat> so he's got like a cloak, like on, underneath. So uh, for the Santas, I, I like doing that. I like putting like a, a, a shoulder cloak around and then his a neck goes around his neck. And then I cut out the arms and the, round, the arms are all round. Like they're not, no flatness around them. There's all rounded all the way around. And then I put the wrinkles where the sleeve would go into his pocket. <clears throat> so you can see how much John had to cut into the body here so that he'd end up with a round arm, right? So yeah. you can see like he's drawn, it looks like he almost drew a line here to yeah. where the arm would go. And then he really cut in because the, this is this portion of the body, and you can see it best over here, isn't at a ninety degree to the coat. It's it's actually undercut, right? So that he right. gets an, he gets some roundness here, and of course the roundness on the outside. So that's that's undercut quite a bit, right? Yep, yep. Don't be afraid to cut too much, like to dig in. Now I got it all, uh, I put a boot in, I put a shoe in at the bottom here. He's like lifting up and he's walking, he's taking a step forward. <clears throat> but uh, notice at the very bottom of the down here, Mark, if you can point your mouse there, a little bit farther over, get right there. See how it's curved in? Nothing's flat, not one thing is flat. It looks Make like it, it's draped on the floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you don't want it, nothing square. If that was square, you, you wouldn't even notice it. But if, once it's curved, you can you notice it. It's like you said, it's draping on the floor. It's touching the floor. It's moving. Mm -hmm. And now I did the beard. Now, that's a, a way, I, a technique that I use. <clears throat> I use the V, like a V cut. I don't, I'll, I'll only use a knife. But I, I'll cut in on a 45 all the way around, like down. But then I will scoop out, I don't know if I can, you can see or not, but I'll scoop out a little bit, little notches here and there to make it look uh, curly or wrink, wrinkly, eh? like uh, curly, I guess be. It's not straight lines down. So it's it's indented a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit. Each side of that line, I'll, I'll cup in a bit. I'll just cut in a little bit. See the yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. the next picture would be better. A little up in here too, you know. Yeah. You know, you got it coming away from the face and then down, right? Yeah. Maybe the next picture. Yeah. See how I got it. You can see the little. It's not a straight line down. I'll, I'll, I'll dig into that to make it flow better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the very bottom, the same thing. Underneath his mustache, I individually cut those feather or feathers, mm -hmm. uh, hair. Mm -hmm. See little notches under there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. It makes it. Yeah, it's all uneven here, right? Yeah, it's not one straight line. There's no yeah. straight lines on that carving whatsoever. Yeah, and the beard, the same thing on the bottom of the beard. It's all notched out. Each uh, layer of hair is all notched out. Mm -hmm. Gives it more interest, I think. Mm -hmm. And I noticed, John, on this picture, you've done some wood burning. Yeah, I just started with the wood, just uh, doing some shadows where those, where the hair would be, his eyebrows, 
all the way around underneath the hat, wherever there's shadow. I, and a lot of times too, you do that to, um, if you got uh, different colors, you want to, you know, run that bead of heat and burn that so that it doesn't bleed over that color doesn't bleed over to the other color mm -hmm. it stops it there there's a side profile just saying like at the back see at the back mark you can put your mouse at the back where his butt would be see how it's shaped and then it goes back down his arm is up his cloak here mm -hmm. it's nothing nothing straight always yeah. always moving yeah. You can see his brim of his hat all the way around, too. It's uh, yeah. curved. Yeah. And there it is painted. And uh, and I put, uh, I got this sparkle. Let's see what it's called there. Glitter. Glitter terrific or something. It's a glitter that you put on. Like once I painted, I uh, glittered it. It gives them nice little sparkles and yeah. Say again how you do the flesh tone, John. That's with uh, where is it here? It's a natural two hundred nine minwax, and I put a little bit of oil paint and I put maybe an inch and a half of oil. It is burnt a raw sienna inside the oil, and I stir it up. And that gives me my, my flesh tone. And then I'll use after it's a, like a, 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 a half hour, whatever, once it's soaked in, then I'll go back and with acrylic paint and redden his nose and cheeks. I usually darken this into blue, but I don't have any blue. I didn't mm -hmm. have any left. Mm -hmm. But usually, well, I'll just take a, like, a, like a drop and just and dry your brush and just burn it like a dry rub that on. You know, the blue, the blue, the blue, the, and, and the red, and the red, yeah, 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 yeah. just to that get in. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, questions for John? <clears throat> and that was a, all with a knife, eh? All a knife, yep. Yeah, never, uh, I don't use too many gouges. Once in a blue moon, I'll use it, but mostly nice. But it doesn't matter. You, you can use whatever tool, with you, whatever you're used to, you can use it. it doesn't You don't have to just use use knife. You do whatever you, uh, whatever makes it easier for you. If it's uh, easy for me is for a knife. Um, for you, it might be gouges or it could be power tools. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It could be... Uh, Whatever you like, mm -hmm. your choice. So what uh, what John is planning to do is um, send this presentation just in like a PDF form, small file to, to each of us electronically. Or I guess I'm planning to do that for you, John. <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning to do that for John. I'll send, I'll send it all to you. And, um, and give it a try, you know, uh, between now and our next meeting, give it a try. And, and as John just said, um, you know, he, he's shown us how to do it on uh, kind of corner wise on a two by two by eight block. But if you want to do it a little differently and, and rough it out a little bit differently and maybe even change the design a bit, uh, go ahead and do that. And we'll have fun with it. And, uh, and it's very caricature in nature. So, uh, so we'll, we'll use some of the things that we've been talking about. And then we'll compare notes as we go along. Yeah, but just, just learn. And, uh, and then the next one you do, you can make it, you know, make his arms out, his hands out. You can have a, a little animal beside him or yeah, whatever yeah. you want. It's up to you. It's uh, if it turns out great. It'll be a terrific gift for somebody you love. And yeah. if it doesn't turn out great, give it to somebody you don't really like that much. Yeah. Are, are, are six foot chain, chainsaw renditions accepted, uh, Mark? <laughs> two feet by two feet by eight feet only. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys, I think uh, that's the end of the show that was um, we covered a lot of stuff I hope uh, I hope some of that was interesting I really enjoyed seeing your carvings and I know uh, John and Murray did as well yep. um, if, if you're interested in the Father Christmas that John brought to us uh, give it a try and uh, we'll have some fun comparing notes next time
yeah it's not it's not a we're not judging anybody we're just gonna you know critique and no judgment no 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 i just had an idea mark that uh, might be another carving coming up maybe for me is a a model and a nun and a housewife walked into a bar <laughs> okay <laughs> okay <laughs> I have to think about that one a bit. Model and then now you are an ex pastor, aren't you? Yeah, I know yeah, so lots of nuns. Try to, keep her, try to keep her clean, young fella. The thing about doing their heads is one thing. I'd like to see you progress lower on the anatomy and see how you pull off that. <laughs> I, started, uh, I started those uh, female faces, and uh, the first one I did, she didn't have a nice, pleasant smile. She just had real model modelish puffy lips and peggy made me change it <laughs> uh, okay listen thanks for tuning in everybody it was great seeing you all again have a have a great few weeks ahead and uh look forward to talking to you again